So good, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you uh, very much for uh, to the Africa Mining Summit for, for hosting me. Um, we're here to talk about uh, the mining equipment companies and particularly some of the, the new technologies uh, that they're developing uh, in the market. Um, as, as an introduction uh, and a background, I've worked as an equities analyst at Credit Suisse for 11 years. Uh, covering a range of, of industrial markets and, and currently leading coverage of, of the mining equipment names that are listed here in Europe. Um, so, so the first slide that we'll touch on, and, and there is um, quite a few slides in this pack, we won't go through them all, um, but please do feel free to, to, to ask for the presentation or, or, or go through it in detail and, and get in touch. But I, I think there's three things that we really want to highlight from the presentation today. Uh, the first thing is that we do see a positive midterm outlook for the mining equipment companies. Um, we do think that mining companies' capex is likely to continue to rise as large new projects are sanctioned. Um, we also, for the service and aftermarket uh, of these businesses, see a very positive outlook um, as production of key commodities like copper continues to rise. Uh, and also they benefit from additional uh, software uh, and solutions that they're providing to the customers to improve productivity. The, the second point that we would make uh, is that we do think that equipment uh, is a key enabler for mining companies to, to lower their emissions. Um, demand for solutions like electric and automated equipment uh, should accelerate as we go through the decade. And then the third point that we make uh, is around consolidation. Uh, so we have seen consolidation continue to pick up across the mid and downstream uh, companies. And, and this does have uh, strong industrial logic around cost synergies, um, but also that these companies can then provide some more holistic solutions uh, to the mining cost to customers, uh, further focusing on, on productivity. Uh, just on slide three here, we, we lay out um, the landscape. Um, we've got on the left of the slide, the drilling and upstream equipment companies. On the right hand of the, the slide, the more mid and downstream companies involved in uh, comminution circuit uh, and processing. And I think we'd really make two points on, on this slide. Firstly, that uh, the upstream uh, drilling equipment, um, particularly in the underground mine trucks and drill rigs, is the most profitable part of the value chain. This is where the market is more consolidated. Uh, these companies typically have um, good pricing power. They're very critical to the operations of the customers. Um, and, and this is where we see kind of profitability into the 20s percent margins. The other point we'd make on the downstream, mid and downstream companies is, is this is where the consolidation is taking place in the industry. So we've seen Metso Utatech uh, have merged. We've recently seen FL Schmidt put in an offer for Tissom Krupp's mining business. Um, and essentially, this is where companies are taking the view that they can combine uh, the midstream circuit with some of the downstream operations um, and then offer a, um, as I said, more holistic um, offering across both equipment and services to better improve productivity. So far, there are kind of fairly extensive integration challenges um, with a large deal like this, as we've seen with Metso Utatech, um, but we are out the other side of those, and, and it does look like the improvements are now coming through uh, quite nicely for, for that business. If, if we move to slide uh, five, um, this is just where we'd highlight uh, some of the uh, combinations uh, that we're seeing. So we lay out in the bottom table the market positions of, of Metso and Utatech. And uh, really, this is where the synergies come from. It's, it's examples like um, Metso selling pumps, Utatech selling solutions that previously that use pumps, uh, and Utatech um, now able to, uh, to fulfill their orders with Metso pumps, where previously they would have had to, to source them externally. So that's sort of where these complementary synergies are coming from. And, and then the other thing we would highlight on this slide is, is on the top left chart, which is just how important the aftermarket businesses are for these companies. Typically for a mining equipment companies, the, it, these will generate anywhere between 50 to 70% of the revenue. So it's actually the bigger revenue driver than the equipment itself. If, if we then move to, uh, to the outlook for the mining equipment companies, 
Um, so we, we made the point that we do think the outlook is, is favorable. Um, we show here a chart that illustrates um, mining capex uh, and we can see that mining capex currently is about 38% below the 2012 peak. Um, on the right, we show the index uh, of the equipment companies and where their revenues are versus prior peaks. We can see that these have performed a little bit better or anywhere between 20 to 30% from the previous peaks. And this is because we have seen a lot of brownfield expansion, which typically is more equipment intensive. Equipment is a higher share of the capex. Um, we would expect then as we move into 2022 and 2023, at these commodity prices, which remain particularly in copper and gold, well above new incentive price levels, that to trigger further new investments um, to drive those revenues uh, higher as we move into later this decade. Um, we made the point uh, just on this slide that uh, copper is, is in our view the, the most attractive commodity. Um, we're seeing, particularly as we mentioned, um, very low new project approvals on greenfield uh, projects through 2019 and 2020. That means new supply coming onto the market um, will be relatively muted beyond 2024. Um, and longer term, using Wood Mackenzie data, uh, highlights that we are going to see towards the end of this decade the, new, the need for new greenfield projects to fill that demand, which continues to rise, um, benefiting from things like EV uh, adoption and grid spending. Um, that's what we illustrate here on, on the next page, that the demand conditions for copper, uh, not just the supply being relatively tight, but the demand conditions are continuing to accelerate. And these are from very well publicized um, drivers like grid spending uh, and renewables, uh, which are creating incremental new copper demand that wasn't there previously. Um, just to finish off on this outlook on, on the gold side, um, we, we do think that particularly gold is, is much more a case of supply constraints. Um, that's where, again, we've seen very little uh, new exploration. Uh, and really, this is about keeping gold production flat because of depletion of existing mines. And we will again need to see um, new projects being sanctioned in 2022 and 2023, um, about 45% above the level of sanctioning in 2016 to 19 to really sustain that production level. And, and that, these two commodities um, typically are disproportionately large for the equipment companies. Um, and we do think that sort of underpins our, our relatively positive outlook. And, and just finally, we, we touched on the, the aftermarket um, being an important part of the growth story for these companies. Um, here is where we typically see uh, commodity or all growth um, in the low single digit, the kind of two and a half to 3% uh, level. Uh, but what we're seeing is ore degradation is another factor that is benefiting the equipment companies. We're seeing uh, the volume of rock that is being processed continues to grow faster than the amount of ore being produced. And what that means for the equipment companies uh, is more aftermarket uh, consumables uh, more spare parts and more pressure on the equipment. On top of that, we're seeing increasing new business models that center around service contracts, uh, extending the life uh, of equipment to try and get more out of the equipment. Um, and, and this is creating a larger addressable market as effectively the, the equipment companies become key partners in improving productivity for the mining customers. The software side will continue to have um, people coming at it from both sides. You'll have the software companies themselves, like Dasto um, uh, and Hexagon. Uh, you'll have the equipment companies like Epiroc and Sandvik creating software. But on, on managing the equipment itself, we think the equipment companies are very well positioned because it's only really them that have enough hours of data uh, to really support uh, meaningful outcomes on how the equipment itself should be run. Um, we think that the role of the software companies is much more in mine planning and simulation, whereas the actual sort of managing of the equipment, telematics, it much more sits with the, the equipment companies. Uh, if, if we now move on to 
uh, the major sort of efficiency savings and themes in this presentation that, that we have sort of talked about uh, being key to the mining equipment companies in the medium term. Uh, the, really, most of these are about efficiency savings and automation um, reduces, uh, reduces the number of people in the mines. Electrification reduces emissions. Software allows for more uptime. Um, and then there's other solutions which are combining sort of energy efficiency and safety. Um, but all of this, if we look at the next slide, um, really centers around increasing ESG priorities for the miners. And I think the most interesting chart here is, is the bottom left one, which shows that within Rio Tinto's ambitions to get to net zero by 2050, they show where the benefits or where the steps will come from to get there. And I think most notable in the short term is switching energy sources to renewables and energy efficiency. Um, and that's, I think, will be the first steps that most of these mining companies take, which is why when we look at the hydrogen electric equipment, we think is something that really gains sort of material traction towards the end of this decade. And, and that's really because um, the biggest savings are with switching energy sources, and that will be the, the priority to hit 2030 goals. And then as we move later on into the decade, as greenfield mines are, are built, um, new mines are open, this is where the opportunity to uh, start a new mine with a blank sheet of paper, um, have a fully electric mine uh, or a fully automated mine, it's a lot easier to build from scratch than it is to integrate into an existing mine. And, and that's also where you get the full benefits. Um, we've heard sort of fully electric mines uh, can be 70% uh, less or produce 70% less emissions uh, than a typical mine. But it's only really when you can have fully electric equipment uh, really maximize the sort of benefits in an underground mine of not having to ventilate it. Um, and, and that's where all of these solutions are, are most effective. Uh, I think if we then just move on to a, an overview of, of, of the key technologies, the two that we would, uh, we would really like to sort of focus on are the electric equipment. Um, and I, I think there's a couple of, of sort of interesting points here. I think it's, it's firstly uh, around what it means for the equipment companies and what it means for business models going forward. And when we think about total cost of ownership of a, a piece of electric equipment, it will be similar uh, for a mining equipment customer for a mining customer as a traditional piece of equipment. But the cost will be a little bit different in terms of the cost of the equipment will be higher, but it will have less maintenance because you will need to service the engine less. You will need less. Um, uh, overhauls of the engine because it's it's electric and it's a battery, um, but what you will need uh, is more um, battery switching, and it will create new business models around um, battery as a service, where the equipment companies own the battery rather than the customer um, and the mining company owning the battery and, and fully owning uh, each part, every part of the equipment. And, and I think really what the the view that we have taken here is that. Um, these solutions ultimately will bring benefits for the customers, both directly in that these machines often are kind of more powerful, um, will uh, are safer uh, in, in the underground environment, are more pleasant to work with for, for employees. Um, but there are indirect benefits like ventilation, which can't be directly applied to, to the equipment, um, but are benefiting and reducing costs for the miners. And, and this is where really we take the view, if, if these equipment companies keep bringing solutions to the customers, we will see um, the productivity benefits from these solutions shared between the equipment companies and the miners. And, and that's, what we're, uh, that's how we think these newer business models where the mining equipment companies sell more service, uh, more software, uh, and this will effectively make up for some of the lost uh, opportunity uh, around some of the spare parts that they used to serve in engines. So we, we take the view as long as these solutions are creating value, um, the mining company, the mining equipment companies themselves will get paid. Uh, if we just touch finally on, on automated equipment, this is really where we've seen um, relatively low penetration. And a lot of the challenges here 
uh, are um, interoperability between automated equipment and non-automated equipment. Um, but the benefits of where we have seen kind of fully automated mines like Sayama, uh, we have seen 30% efficiency savings, and that really comes from uh, increased running hours, more accurate drilling. And I think the interesting thing about the, the automation is most of the drill rigs that Eparok and Sambic are selling can be retrofitted with automation. And so I think that is something uh, we will increasingly see uh, tele-remote drilling as well, which will be controlled uh, above ground um, to avoid people going underground um, to actually operate the drill rigs. So again, these solutions um, will be better suited to sort of fully automated mines, fully electric mines, which is why we think these solutions will roll out later this decade. Um, penetration is relatively low, but we would say that the initial signs and benefits um, are very compelling for fully automated and electric mines. Um, as you can see from the side, there's, there's more detail on, on other energy efficiency and savings operation, uh, savings solutions that these mining equipment companies have. Um, and, and as I said, there's slides later on uh, in the presentation and feel free to, to go through those. But thank you everyone very much for, for your time. And we great, greatly appreciate the, the opportunity to speak here um, and look forward to, to connecting with many of you in the future. Thank you.